Hey guys, it's Bo with Llama Life. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is our last uh, series of backcountry stove and cooking systems um, that we use all the time. This last one is one that we don't use all the time, but is always kind of our backup and can be your backup when you run out of fuel or are in a survival situation. So we're gonna go ahead and dig into it. Thanks for clicking on the video. Please share, subscribe, and comment. We're gonna get the chainsaw out. We're gonna cut a block of wood somewhere between uh, 12 and 18 inches. So we'll get the shades on for a little bit of eye protection. We'll get our chainsaw here. And uh, we're looking for something that's gonna kind of light fast. So dry wood and anything that's, you know, six to 10, 12 inches in circumference. Let's go see if we can find something. This looks like a pretty good tree. Um, looks like it's about eight or so inches around, maybe 10. We'll go ahead and get this, get this one cut and bring it over. Okay, we got our piece of wood. Now we're gonna bring it over and start cooking. Believe it or not, this is gonna be our, our backcountry stove here in just a second. This is called a Swedish torch. Um, it's a pretty cool way of cooking stuff. We used to do it quite a bit when we were cutting wood in the backcountry firewood. Um, and as kind of a last resort, you can do this same type of thing that we're about to do. Even if you don't have a chainsaw, you can just do it on a smaller scale with a handsaw. Um, so very practical. It's a good way for cooking if you have to cook for a long time and you don't have any fuel. So again, it's called a Swedish torch. And what we're trying to do is make sure it's level. And before I start cutting, I kind of like to make sure that my pot is going to sit good on top of there. You're probably wondering like, what in the world is he going to do and how is he going to cook? But uh, here we go, we're going to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chainsaw and I've got a natural split in the log right here. And so I'm going to cut down about a third down the log, just like this. And then I'm going to do it a few more times. And what I'm trying to do is cut channels inside the log so it has the opportunity to breathe. I'm going to put on my safety glasses wherever they're at. Oh, <laughs> right there. And we'll go ahead and cut this log a few times. I'm in the back country, whether I'm hunting, fishing, guiding, or doing whatever, I always have a, a fire starting kit. And my go-to is a butane torch. I really like it just because it works great in uh, high winds, pretty much all temperatures, especially if you keep it on your person when, uh, when you're going, when it's really cold. The next thing, I always have a backup lighter just in case my torch doesn't work. And then the good old faithful, trusty, waterproof and floating um, match case with matches. It has a striker on the back and replacement striker inside. Uh, my go-to is zip fire starter. It just gets a fire going quick and fast and works when uh, helps dry out wood if you have a lot of wet wood. So zip fire starters, you can get these things at Walmart. They're phenomenal. Um, they're really light. You can light the package even if you need to but uh, they work really great. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these and uh, we're gonna get the fire started here in the old booty torch. So I kinda wanna reset this thing up um, for myself. And I'm gonna kinda break up my fire starter just a little bit. Open up my package here. Oh, it's coming out that end. And then try to start stuff some of this fire starter down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and light some of this on fire. So once this kind of gets going, it's gonna start from the inside and it'll start burning in a circular pattern, kind of outward like this. And once I get it going, then I can put my pot on it. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get our second one started while this one gets started up and uh, starts burning. So this is the Swedish torch. You can cook on this a little idea pretty easily. So the next thing that we're going to do is called a, a fire candle and it's basically a very simple way of doing things and so I'm going to go ahead and cut three pieces and, and kind of get some sticks and kindling going and uh, that'll be kind of a method two to when you don't have a means of starting a fire and cooking on it um, of being able to do it in the backcountry. This next method uh, it's, it has lots of different names we basically just call it the fire candle. Um, we have the Swedish torch over here we got the fire candle. So we got basically three logs, same diameter, uh, pretty much the same height. And we'll knock all the snow off them here 
and then we got some twigs and kindling to kind of help us get going so knock off the snow here that helps a little bit all right so we kind of will set these up like this we kind of set two together and then add the third one in a little bit there we go and then we're going to add some a little bit of base to it Okay, so we got two logs set up here, and we got a third one over here. And then we kind of set up a little base and put some uh, small kindling up against it. And then we'll get out our zip lighter. And then, obviously, get, the, get out the old torch, give it a kiss for good luck. And we'll start our, our zip lighter down there. Awesome. And once we do that, then I'll try to set set this up I like that it's not too even and this is hard to kind of always get it even now we'll go grab some snow okay and we'll let that start going there and as it's kind of starting you can kind of feed it underneath here kind of help it go Where's my axe? Good dead stuff, dry stuff, helps out a lot. Okay, so there's our fire candle. We're gonna heat, you can heat up water, it works really, really well and kind of burns from the inside out. And uh, the stable and the more flat you can get the top, obviously the better. And over here, we have our, uh, <laughs> our Swedish torch going. It's already ready to rock and roll. It's been on for about five minutes or so. So it needs to go in a little bit more before we put on our pot. You can put the pot there on the side. You can see that it's starting to get some pretty good coals. So that will melt snow, no problem. And uh, you can cook off that. So got the Swedish torch, fire candle. And now for my last and uh, oldest trick that I know is uh, pretty simple. It's really inexpensive and a pretty easy way to be able to cook in the backcountry if you need to. Um, when I was in college, I used to use this all the time. <laughs> um, so anyway, let me show it to you guys. So you just get a little heat shield and then you just go get char charcoal briquettes. So these are already um, ready to go, ready to light. So pretty simple. I'll take them out, on, put them on my heat shield. And so I kind of like to put them in a, a pattern like a, I would around a pot, around the heat shield, and then a couple there in the center. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. And if you can touch them at the beginning and then move them after, it's pretty good. So I'll get out the torch. Then I'll light these guys up. Okay guys, we got all three going. Um, our Swedish torch over here, um, the snow is melted. It's going great so far. And this will be going about 10 minutes on the torch. The fire candle is doing pretty good. It just barely started creating some ashes. So we're gonna go ahead and tuck some of that wood back up in there, keep it going. And so this one's ready to go. It's definitely hot enough right there, woof, to start uh, melting water or cooking. And then we got our uh, charcoal still lighting up. So. This one takes a little bit while to get going, but basically all of them will start going, ready to cook, start cooking in about 10 minutes. So if you put a pot, most pots on top of the charcoal will just melt um, from the bottom or they'll warp over time just because of how hot it gets. And so what I like to do is get some live branches, you know, inch to two inches in diameter and kind of build a little frame around it. Um, and that way you have a place for your pot to sit on and it's off the charcoal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So. Uh, get some live stuff cut and then we'll build a little frame over the charcoal. All right. All right, there you go. That's our three methods for uh, cooking and boiling water in the backcountry, especially if you run out of fuel of any kind or in a survival situation. You have the Swedish torch over here. It's been going for about 15 minutes and we have 
really, really hot, boiling water. Then we've got our uh, fire candle and then just simple old charcoal briquettes here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. Please uh, share and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.